Um, how many of you love your ISP? I mean, just love it. Okay, there's one. Who's your ISP? Comcast. <laughs> right, Jay. Okay. I love my ISP. I can say that with a straight face because my ISP is GitHub. So what are GitHub pages? Really, it's just a way to host static content. Um, GitHub has this neat idea of create a repository of the right name, put your web pages on there. They're static web pages. And uh, they'll display them for you. And they do it fast, and they do it free. And they don't hassle you. They don't uh, send you spam. They don't. It's really free. They don't you know, like send you emails saying it's free, but upgrade to premium or anything like that. It's, it's just free. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. They have an automatic page generator. I don't really like it. It's kind of limiting, but you know, it's one way to get started. Um, you can use a static site generator, which is probably the, the normal way that most people do this, or you can just code it up by hand. Okay, five reasons to like GitHub pages. Pages are static HTML, so they're easy to do. I mean, just any way you can generate HTML, you can put it up there. Um, the GitHub infrastructure is really fast. I've uh, measured the same website on three different ISPs and GitHub. The best I could do is about 500 milliseconds on any of the ISPs uh, in the US. Overseas, it was about two seconds, I think, going to Germany. Um, GitHub does it in about 80 milliseconds on average. So nice, snappy, responsive pages. Partly, you know, it's all static, but uh, they take care of caching, and they have a nice uh, infrastructure. Another thing I like about it, there's no tooling involved. Use what you like. Use your whatever editor, whatever static site generator you want to use, um, whatever JavaScript libraries, it doesn't matter. Again, they're just going to take whatever you give them pretty much and display it. Automatic deployment. This is one of my favorite features of it. You update the repository and you're published. It usually takes about 10 or 15 seconds on average for them to rebuild it and it becomes available. Um, another reason to like it, because it uses Git. Um, <laughs> How many of you don't use Git? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, a few of you. Don't be embarrassed about that. I think I came, I came to Git late myself. Um, I was using Mercurial and Bazaar and a few others. I don't know why I, I you know, I seemed, to, I, I was resisting it the whole time. Um, this is a nice gentle introduction to it. I mean, this is a good way to get familiar with the, the whole uh, Git, GitHub sort of environment. So, um, nice gentle introduction. And my most favorite reason is that there's no FTP involved. You just do a git push and your pages are up there. Getting started. All you have to do to get started is create a, lot, a repository. It does have to have the right name. So if you have a GitHub account, you have a username, you got to name your repository, your username.github.io. That's really about the only rule there. Clone your repository to your machine. Again, if, you've, if you're familiar with Git at all, this is a pretty you know, common thing to do. Um, create a page. Doesn't have to be very elaborate, obviously. Push it up. Again, very, very common. Actually, once you get things going, you end up just doing git commit, git push. So it goes really quick. And you open your browser, and this is how you feel because your web page is up there. All right, it's how I felt. But. <laughs> Project pages. So this repository is for your about me sort of website. It's, you get one of these per user account. But if you have projects and you want web pages, you can also do that. And it, it's actually pretty simple. Again, you take your repository, whatever repository that your project's in, you create a, a GH pages um, branch. And usually it's an isolated branch, but it doesn't have to be. And uh, you put your pages in there. And you get the same, same thing. So when, um, so when you go to open up your website, so your normal website on GitHub would look like that. I didn't mention that before. So that's where you get your web page. It'll be username.github.io, just like the name of the repository. All right? And then for your project, uh, project pages, it's just that plus the project name. 
blogging. So the other thing we like to do at these uh, personal websites is blog. I know I do. I host my blog on uh, GitHub pages. In fact, I do a lot of things on GitHub pages these days. But um, there are a couple different ways to go at blogging. Um, you can use a static site generator. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. I used Harp for a while, which I liked quite a bit. Um, and it was not a bad workflow, but then I discovered that GitHub would do it for me, which was even better. And the way it will do it for you is with something called Jekyll. So Jekyll is a static site generator. Um, and what happens actually is when you publish your pages or when you update your repository, when they go to generate the pages, they actually drive it through Jekyll, even if it's just static HTML pages. It'll leave HTML pages alone. But if you've got special files in there with config and special header stuff, it's, it's very lightweight. They'll go ahead and run those templates that you supply and produce a website for you. And one of the nice things about Jekyll is that it's blog aware. So they've got templates that um, will allow you to very quickly um, spool up a blog. And then all you do is you post a file to a folder with the right name and it gets incorporated into your website about 15 seconds later and you're, you're published. Um, the easiest way to get started with Jekyll oh, we go, is to uh, just go to the uh, Jekyll Now repository. It's a GitHub repository. Clone it. It's a bare bones, not much styling or anything, um, but it's the easiest way to just get scaffolding. It's like the yeoman of, you know, of GitHub pages, so to speak. There are tons of public uh, templates available. You just look for Jekyll templates, and you'll find at least 100 different um, templates for whatever style of website you want and styling, or, or you can roll your own like I did. Um, another thing um, that they give you is custom URL. So maybe you don't like, you know, Mike-Ward at github.io. I know I didn't. Um, come on, come back to me. No, I'm not going to escape out of that. I was going to show you the URL there for this, but for some reason, that's not escaping out, so I'm not going to worry about it. So anyways, you can add a file to your repository. There we go. You can add a file to your repository called CNAME, and you put your, your custom URL in there, whatever, you know, whatever your DNS provider gave you, whatever fun name that you have. And then you have to go and configure the DNS records on your host. And there are instructions on GitHub pages, but basically you just point to their IP ad addresses, and they resolve it for you. So you can have your GitHub pages and your custom URL. So you can go to like mike-ward.net, and that's actually actually mike-ward.github.io, but it, it it's just like it's hosting on a regular ISP. Um, for project pages, you use a subdomain for your about one, your Apex domain. And after you get that all working, you feel good again. Yeah. And that's a lightning talk for you. Thank you. <laughs>